That's the mountain Mum and I walked up a couple weeks ago. I can see the track that we took. One day you're up on land looking at the sea, next thing you know you're on the sea looking up at the land. Something, 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 my song. Soaking up those last little dregs of internet before we go cold turkey for 15 days. We are really starting to lose sight of land now and get into the scenery for the next two weeks, which is just ocean. Ocean and sky and us. We first came to Thailand last year, around this time actually. And in that time we've learned to say hello, thank you, good morning. Uh, cold coconut, good morning, and how to count to 10. Okay. So let me dispense that upon you now. So, hello is swadi kap, thank you is kapong kap, good morning is swadi don chao kap, the cold coconut is ma prao jin jin, we don't know goodbye. No, we don't know goodbye. We just say see you. I know how to or say bye 20, bye. 20 baht as well. 20 baht? Samroi baht. Samroi baht. And I know how to count to 900 baht in, in, in hundreds. So I know how to nung, count to 10. Nungroi baht, samroi baht, singroi baht, siroi baht, haroi baht, and then so on and so forth. Yeah. I know how to count to 10. It's nung som sam si ha huk jet bek gao si. Not very good pronunciation. That wasn't good. Nung song sam si ha hook jet bat gao sip. It almost seems kind of like a waste spending so much time there and then only learning a handful of phrases. But we spent less time in Indonesia and actually learnt more Indonesian. But Indonesian is quite an easy language to learn compared to Thai. Thai is a little bit tricky. To be honest, I don't really know how to feel about this passage. It's exciting but also scary because we haven't been on a passage this long in years and so we don't know what to expect. We have been told that it is a fairly mundane passage. It's light winds aft of the beam, which means it's behind the boat pretty much. So yeah, I think if there is wind, it's usually coming from behind us. If there isn't wind, there isn't wind. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a pretty good passage. Asia is so amazing. I actually love Asia. It's such a cool place. I remember when we were leaving Australia, we kind of had this same feeling. We were like, oh, we're going to Asia. Scary. What will the people be like? What will the food be like? We were scared that we were going to have trouble finding normal food. We thought that it was all just going to be like seafood and you'd just be eating squid and prawns. But no, it's like some of the best food I've ever had here. Yeah. Year and a half later, we're leaving Asia. Next stop, Maldives. I'm looking forward to the Maldives. That's gonna be cool. I really want some crystal clear blue water, which I think the Maldives will have. Another thing that I'm quite excited for in this passage, and I was excited for it about two weeks, a couple weeks before the passage, is not having internet. I personally feel like I spend too much time on my phone doom scrolling and I just kind of have been looking forward to not being able to go on my phone. Out here, where my phone is pretty much useless and I can't go on the internet, my phone just becomes quite boring. So I think it'll be nice, it'll be kind of like a reset. And uh, yeah, 
I've been looking forward to that. It is day two of our Thailand to Maldives passage and we have lifted up our brand new asymmetrical spinnaker. Yeah, we haven't named this one. This is actually its maiden voyage. I'm not sure if you'd say maiden voyage for something that flies, but I'm going to say it. This is maiden voyage. So far today has been very relaxed. We've had the wind coming from behind us this whole morning and yeah smooth sailing so yeah i mean if the whole passage goes like this should be pretty sweet we will cope very easily gosh <laughs> uh, it's just a 360 degree view of nothing just dark blue and light blue that's all it is all the way around us not even any clouds, it's just ocean and sky. Crazy. Crazy. We're gonna have an hour where we only speak Thai to each other. Oh really? Nang nang. Nang nang nang. Zom zom zom. Zom zom. Ah! 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 Swadi dum chao? Ka? Yeah. Ah! Ah! Nang nang. Nang nang. Nang nang. Ah! 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 Song Sam Si Ha. <laughs> it's great. Now that we've left Thailand, we're really locking in on our Thai numbers and pronunciations of words in Thai. And while they say you can take the man out of Thailand, but you can't take Thailand out the man. You take the man out of the. How are you feeling on day two? so relaxed. <laughs> oh, I'm just so relaxed. Nicholas Cage! <laughs> Mother, how are you feeling on day two? Uh, loving it, loving the conditions. Beautiful conditions. Downwind sailing, yes please, all the way, thank you. <laughs> the high seas. It is currently day Sam of the passage. Yeah, it's been chill. We've had tailwinds all the way so far. The sea is a bit confused, as you can probably tell from how the camera's shaking around the place. We have waves coming from about three or four different angles, kind of coming from this way, that way, that way, and even from that way now. That's new. Since we've got a bit of pace on and we're going with it, we don't really feel it too much. Last night we did, because we were going one knot, and so the waves were just doing that thing to us and it was horrible. It was really nasty. I might get a haircut today, but we'll see how we go with that. I'll come back to that later.
Holy shit. We got a marlin. Get the camera. We got a marlin. Oh my god, we have a marlin. Oh, no. No. We got a marlin. Oh my god, we have a marlin. You filming? Yes. Holy shit. We got a lose bus. It's going to run away on us. Bring in the at least, someone. Um, yeah, we have to no, Ivan. We're, we're gonna lose. Oh, it's broken off. Alright, go on, off he goes. Oh no. We had a marlin. No, poor guy, he's still going. Oh yeah, he's still jumping. Look, he's still jumping. Oh, wow. Poor guy. God. We just caught a marlin. Well, hooked a marlin. We didn't actually catch it. I kinda have mixed feelings about that because they're such an amazing fish, super rare, I think. I kind of feel bad because with our fishing setup, we're pretty much just catching it and releasing it. There's no way we'd ever bring in a marlin with our fishing rod and the line we use. And the freeze is already chock full of stuff as it is. There's no way we'd fit a marlin in there. <laughs> We've only ever hooked a marlin one time before this and that was sailing down the east coast of Australia. I didn't actually get to see it. I heard the commotion. Mom, Dad and Ivan saw it, but I was too slow and the marlin got off before I was out there. Seeing that one was pretty impressive. I'd say it would have been about the size of the hammock. If you include its long spear, then bigger than the hammock, but the body, I'd say, be about the size of the hammock. Shit. <laughs> From going to catching no fish to catching a bloody marlin is a bit over the top. I think the line was going to snap either way, is that his lie or not? Uh, your knot came undone and let off the marlin, Ivan. Hang on. Okay, coming to the end of my night shift. I think I've got about 10, 15 minutes left. The conditions have been more or less the same these past two days. Just downwind sailing. It's very easy, very comfortable. Tonight, the wind has been a little bit annoying because it's at the wrong angle. And so the spinnaker is kind of only just holding in there with this angle of wind. So every now and then it'll go slack and then do that and that. Other than that, the night shift has been fine. Oh, here it goes. That one wasn't that bad. It's easy to get paranoid. I keep hearing engines. I think I might be hearing planes, but it gives me those little kind of stabs of anxiety in my stomach. It's a horrible feeling. Third night down, probably about 12 to go. Good morning sailors. This is day four of our Indian Ocean crossing from Thailand to the Maldives. And we've got a little bit of trouble this morning. The sails are all fine, they're all chill. But we managed to snag ourselves on a rope last night. Nobody knows when, but we just woke up and got a long rope heading out the back of the boat, either hooked on the rudder or the propeller. So Ivan and I are going to have to get in and deal with that. Ready? Here we go. Oh, no way, there is a oh, fish, in a here. fish in here. That can be for Mocha. Well, that was easy. It was almost too easy. There was just a loop caught around one of the blades of the propeller. I don't know how it managed to do that, just by chance. Slip that off and we're free.
is something I haven't told you. A couple months back, November I think it was, of last year, I started losing my hair. Some of you may have noticed, I hope you didn't notice. For me, it was noticeable. And I had no idea why it was happening until about January, late January. At the time I thought it was stress because I was in Australia working while trying to also edit and put out videos. It wasn't until later on that we did a little bit of research and found out that it was actually from having too much vitamin A. And this goes back to when I had measles. Because when I had measles, I was taking vitamin A to get better and I just didn't really stop taking it. I just kept having a tablet a day which ended up being quite a bad thing. So yeah, from November all the way through to late January, I was losing hair. Like, and I wasn't losing just a little bit, I was losing a lot. Each time I put my hand through my hair, I was losing at least 10 hairs. Uh, and then showering was just crazy. They just wouldn't stop falling out. And for a while, I was having anxiety that I was gonna go bald or have bald spots. Once I figured out that it was vitamin A, I immediately stopped taking that. And after about a week, there was a noticeable difference in how much hair I was losing. Fast forward to now, my hair has started to regrow. I'm not sure if you can see, but around my hairline, there are baby hairs coming back through. And that'll be happening all over my head because the hair loss wasn't in one place, it was everywhere. And so I'm sure that all over my head, there will be a bunch of baby hairs coming through. So, since my hair is uneven now, it's all getting thin at the top because of how much I've lost, and down the bottom I'm sure it's starting to get a little bit more full. I am gonna shave my head so that everything can grow out evenly. I'm kind of resetting my hair growth. Actually, no, literally, literally I am. These are all brand new hairs. For a long time I thought they were gonna be permanently gone and I'd just have thin hair for the rest of my life, but I'm glad to see them coming back through. It's a big relief. <laughs> Pretty horrible feeling having hair loss. And even though mine wasn't legitimate, it wasn't a genetic hair loss, it was still not nice. <sighs> highlight of this trip so far for me has honestly been the dinners. <laughs> the mom of one of Ivan's friends back in Thailand makes really good massamans. Since we knew we were going on a passage and wouldn't be eating like this for a while, we ordered 12 massamans from her and ended up actually leaving with 13. To be honest, I think these are the best massamans I've ever had. They are huge. One of them can feed two people and they're 60 baht each which is about $3 New Zealand. Anyway, we'll be eating these for the next couple days and I'm loving it. See you tomorrow.